I'm going to start recording. Hello, ahead of the 2022 local elections for Reading, Reading today is interviewing all four party leaders. Now, this is an unusual election for Reading as all seats are being contested. This is due to the boundary changes, which has seen the number of seats increased from 46 to 48. We're going to be focusing on five topics with five minutes for each topic. At the end, the party leader will be able to make a direct address to you, the voter. While the candidates have been briefed on the subject before the interview, they have not been given any questions in advance. Benny Today has also prepared some ward pages on its website, giving you the chance to meet each of the candidates who are standing in your ward. With me now is Rob White. He's the leader of the Reading Green Party. So thanks for joining us, Rob. Really appreciate your time. Hi, Phil. Now, the first topic that we're going to look at is development. And your manifesto talks of the need for Reading to have more affordable housing. So let's start with council housing. Now, a lot of our housing policy has been dictated by the government. The, current, the government has got high housing targets for the southeast, and they're also trying to reform planning system. Now, you've obviously said you want these council houses, but how can a Green Council change Whitehall policy? How can it make Reading social housing any better? It's definitely an uphill challenge when, when you're up against the government, but I think we need to be making the case for more affordable housing and more council housing because they're, they're the challenges we have in Reading. Uh, I, I speak to people all the time that are, that are unfortunately having to move away from the town because they just can't afford the, the housing that there is. And so we, we need more affordable housing in Reading. Unfortunately, uh, a little while ago, the council dropped the policy. Uh, it used to be that we need we required 50% uh, of housing from a development to be affordable, and that's been dropped down to 30%. Uh, we think the council needs to keep making the case to the government and to developers, uh, fight tooth and nail for our residents. Um, Obviously, you know, this is a, a big issue for people. There's lots of new developments being talked about or being put up. There's lots of flats going around the IDR at the moment. And some of those are not social housing at all. I mean, how can you put pressure on the developers? I think the, the council's legal team uh, need to be doing everything they can, looking through those agreements, uh, and, and, and they need to be well resourced to do that. Unfortunately, it's often the case that the, the, the a, an overstretched planning team, an overstretched legal team is up against a developer with a, with a lot of a lot of clout, a lot of capacity, a, a, lo a large team of, of lawyers and planners. Uh, I, I think we need to resource the council teams better so they can put up more of a fight and get the best deal for Reading residents. And you're convinced that a, a green run council could actually make that happen? I think a Green Run Council would do its best to make that happen. Uh, I think, it, as I said, it's going to be tough. It's going to be an uphill struggle. Uh, but we think that is a real priority for the town. Uh, and, and we would do our best to, to make sure there was more affordable housing uh, for our residents. Um, you've also said in your manifesto you want to do more to tackle rough sleeping. The current council has made some strides with the Great Nollies uh, Street scheme that put in where shipping containers have been repurposed into homes. But what more can actually be done? You know, bear in mind this is a very complex issue and many people on the streets actually have complex needs that can't be solved by just saying, here's a house. Yeah, I, I totally accept that it, it is very difficult to to house some people that have a whole host of uh, needs from, from, from drug issues to, to mental health issues. Uh, we think the housing first approach is right, where, where you don't set up loads of hoops for someone to jump, jump through before they get a house, that they get a house and, and then try and resolve the other problems. Uh, unfortunately, rough sleeping in Reading is going in the wrong direction at the moment. Uh, the number of people on our streets, as, as is shown by the annual survey the council does, uh, is, is going up and not down, but we've seen what's possible. We've seen that uh, back in 2010, uh, the rough sleeping head count was down at, in single digits. Uh, we've seen that in COVID, when, when the government uh, funded councils, uh, the, the number of people that were rough sleeping was again down in sing single digits. We've seen what's possible when, when there's uh, the funding and when there's the will and when there's the resource, but there, there just isn't at the moment and it, it is moving in the wrong direction, unfortunately. And finally, in this section, Rob, uh, your manifesto talks about licensing all landlords. 
So how would this differ from the accreditation scheme that the council is currently introducing? So, so currently not all landlords are licensed by the council. We think the council needs to bring in a scheme as soon as possible that would license all landlords. The council has been talking about this for years, uh, but every year they talk about it, every year it, it's delayed. Uh, we, we think it needs to be brought in as, as soon as possible because there are many, many uh, rented houses in Reading, uh, some of which are of a very poor quality, some of which uh, have uh, create problems in in the community and in the local area we think a landlord licensing scheme is is a way to, to drive up the 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 quality of rented accommodation in reading uh, and it would be a, a win for people that were renting it be a, a win for the communities we think the council needs to prioritize the scheme and, and bring it in as soon as possible and not just kick it down the road yet again well moving on to roads traffic is one of the downsides of, of anyone living in reading and a good example is the recent roadworks in Caversham that's seen traffic snarl up across the town. However, we do need cars to get about. So is this just an issue that we have to tolerate? We just have to put up with the jams? Yeah, anyone that lives in Reading knows that you, you have traffic jams, not just at rush hour, but, but all day long, unfortunately. Uh, and and that, that's cars and other vehicles kicking out loads of pollution, uh, which people are then breathing in. We, we think the council needs to invest more in alternatives to the car, in walking, in cycling, in public transport. So, some things can, can be done easily. The, the council could change the timings on pedestrian crossings uh, to give more priority to pedestrians. Uh, uh, the, the cycle network could be joined up at the moment. It's very fragmented, uh, but it, it could be joined together. Uh, so it was a, re a real network. We'd like to see uh, more affordable public transport. And then when, you, when you've made the alternatives to the car, more attractive then more people will use those alternatives for some journeys people are, are, are still going to need cars uh, that, that that's obvious uh, we'd like to see the council rolling out more electric charging uh, points and making it easier for people to charge their cars especially in roads where uh, the people don't have driveways I, I live in Newtown in East Reading and no oh, there's probably one driveway in the whole of Newtown maybe maybe two uh, and so people living in Newtown would struggle to charge an electric car at the moment but the council could make it a lot easier for those people we think it's the, it's those sorts of measures the council needs to be pushing unfortunately they, they've been wasting time on schemes like uh, a, a car park by the Thames uh, they've been wasting money on uh, the road by the Thames East Reading Mass Rapid Transit uh, hundreds of thousands of pounds have been spent uh, on that scheme which, which local people objected to Wokingham Council objected to that money's down the toilet uh, it could, if, if the council had been prioritising something like a low emission zone, we, we could have that. It, it could be happening now. It could be discouraging polluting vehicles from coming through Reading. It could be raising money for the council. Uh, but the council has been prioritising the, the wrong schemes, unfortunately. Up on that uh, bridge over the River Thames, Bob. Yeah, Reading's got a problem with traffic. Reading's got a problem with jams. You know, we've talked about that already. Now, how can people take the Green Party and very seriously uh, on tackling local transport if you're objecting to some progress that will actually make lives easier for people? Sorry, I'm, I'm not following that, that question. Which, 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 what are we objecting to? The, the third bridge over the River Thames, the, the oh. Mass Rapid Transit Scheme. You know, you've objected to it on environmental grounds. You've objected to it because residents of Newtown said they didn't want it. However, for the greater good, surely it would be better to build this bridge. So, yeah, there are two schemes. There's the East Reading Mass Rapid Transit Scheme, which is a road uh, along the River Thames, crossing the River Kennet and heading into town. Uh, that, that was the scheme that I was referring to. That's the scheme the council's wasted hundreds of thousands of pounds on. The council has also been been wasting money, I would, I would say, uh, on uh, a third Thames crossing. Uh, the council's been interested and people have been talking about a third Thames crossing for over a hundred years. Uh, it, it's never been 
implemented uh, because in South Oxfordshire uh, they see that if this crossing was put in it would dump a load of cars onto their roads so, so they object to it. it it's just it's just yet another scheme that's that's moving a problem from point A to point B it's not tackling the problem the problem is the number of cars just spreading them out and putting them in a slightly different place and creating problems for someone else doesn't solve the problem it, it moves the problem we th as I said before we think the council needs to be spending more money uh, on uh, decent walking cycling and public transport uh, uh, schemes and and that that's what's going to tackle the problem uh, if, if people can get a decent bus from uh, Reading to Wokingham uh, from Reading to Bracknell uh, and and so on it, it's those sorts of decent public transport services that then reduce the need for for car use and and ultimately tackle the problems now you've also talked in your manifesto about uh, trying to combat unworkable road building schemes this is part of your pledge about clean air zones but where in reading could a new road actually be built there wasn't any space for one the, the I, well, we were talking about the East Reading Mass Rapid Transit scheme with that, which is an unwork, unworkable road scheme. Uh, it is building a road along the River Thames, crossing at Kennet Mouth and going through uh, a parallel to the railway track uh, out into uh, connecting with the uh, around Napier Road, the Vaston Road roundabout. That That is the road we are referring to. That is an unworkable scheme, we think. The council has already wasted hundreds of thousands of pounds uh, on on the scheme, which could have been spent tackling problems that people are experiencing at the moment. And unfortunately, it's been flushed down the toilet. Let's move on to the cost of living. Now, this is a national issue, but obviously the impact is local, as you just referred to. What is it that Greens could offer people? If you were running the council, how could you put your arms around the people of Reading? One thing that we've been uh, arguing for but because yeah the, the cost of living is a, is a massive problem for people uh, there are already 7,000 uh, houses living households in, in fuel poverty who, who, who can't uh, afford to properly heat their homes and having to choose between heating and eating uh, when, when we put the council under pressure on this they, they admitted that this number 7,000 could be tripling uh, if, if the correct policies aren't put in, in place uh, so one thing we've been uh, arguing for lobbying for calling for for a number of years now is is, is more money spent insulating homes in Reading. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the council has recently, as you will have seen, had to hand back uh, 0.5 million pounds, half a million pounds of money that it got from the government to spend insulating homes in Reading. But because they didn't have the, the right capacity in the housing team, in the sustainability team to to properly put together the bid in the first place uh, and then promote it and spend that money in the second place, uh, they've had to give back half a million pounds. Uh, we've been arguing for that, that additional capacity. We've moved budget amendments uh, to try and beef up the sustainability team beef up the, the housing team and the, the council, the Labour, the Labour council councillors have, have voted those schemes down and now they've had to hand back half a million pounds. That's something that we, we could have had, we could have spent and would, would have helped to tackle the, the cost of living. It, it wouldn't, wouldn't have solved the problem, but it would have been a start. Well, surely instead of insulating homes, the Green Party should be pushing for grants to allow Reading homes to have things like solar panels and heat pump put in instead would that not be a better use of your campaigning well insulation is always the the, the number one thing and any heat pump installer will tell you that you need to have a, a properly insulated home before you put a heat pump in it's got the best return for for your your pound spent or insulation compared to other things which, which need to be done but you need to insulate your home first otherwise it's you're, you're just sending that uh, heat or energy uh, back out your doors windows and and, and so on can't eat insulation. If you put solar panels on people's houses, then that will help them generate free electricity, which means they can still at least cook. So surely that's a better a better thing to be doing. Uh, we, 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 we support the council uh, putting solar panels on council buildings. When we held the balance of power a few years ago, that is something we argued for. And the council took advantage of the government's uh, feed-in tariff scheme and put a load of uh, solar panels on council buildings. They did have a second round of that and they did put solar panels on uh, council houses. We have asked about that recently and they are, they are looking at doing a third round. And, and we definitely support that. But I would still argue that houses still need to be properly insulated and, and 
that should be the priority because that is the most uh, you get your best your, the best return on every pound spent insulating houses uh, solar panels are, are more expensive uh, and you don't get a good as return as you do with insulating houses so i think we need to be doing both but if if we have only got limited money and so that's why we've been pushing for an insulation scheme in particular because we think that is that's the best way to spend the money that's the most efficient way and that would help most people now, your manifesto as well talks about supporting investment in local shopping areas to support locally sourced affordable food. Now, Reading is very urban, so it's really hard to keep those food miles down and also feed hundreds of thousands of people. So how do you think that is actually an achievable policy? We think that, uh, unfortunately, the council prioritises the town centre uh, to the detriment of the local district shopping centres. Uh, we think the council needs to invest more in those local district shopping centres uh, so that people can can shop more locally, uh, have, have access to uh, that, that that good produce that, that people are selling. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't, you just have walked through the town centre and it's, it's spick and span, it's nice and tidy. Uh, there, there's not a, a bag of rubbish to be seen. For example, uh, if you look at the district shopping centres, you walk through them because the council doesn't prioritise the district shopping centres, uh, th there's normally rubbish strewn everywhere, overflowing bins. W w the, the point that I would make is the council needs to be investing more in the district shopping centres rather than just prioritise the town centre. Uh, moving on to the issue of finances. Um, this is quite a difficult issue for local authorities. In 2020, nine in 10 local authorities did not have enough money to cover its spending plans. Obviously, this is partly due to COVID, but it's also a problem as government support grants have changed in recent years. Now, bearing in mind the financial constraints, bearing in mind the way in which um, you're only allowed to raise council tax by a certain amount each year, how could a green run Reading Council be trusted with residents' money? We'd like to see a council that uh, ha that isn't that doesn't have a one-party minority like we have at the moment. Uh, the Labour Party's got got. 30 councillors, 30 plus councillors, and they just steamroller policies through. Uh, we think that if there were more green councillors, there would be more scrutiny, would be able to hold the Labour Party to account in, in a far better way, and that would get better decisions for residents. Uh, the council spent over a million pounds on Ready Bike, for example. Uh, there's no Ready Bikes to be seen anymore in Reading. The council has, uh, as I've previously mentioned, wasted money on trying to build a road by the Thames. That was a few hundred thousand uh, pounds the council hollowed out the their own finance team to the point where they got into a massive financial mess and uh, which is it's still not resolved they haven't signed off uh, some of the old accounts and that's cost the council over one million pounds uh, and counting uh, I think that if there were more green councillors uh, we would have uh, we'd be able to hold the council to account and we'd get better decisions uh, and that would be better for the residents of Reading. The question was, Rob, actually, if you were running the council, if, the, if it was a green-led Reading Borough Council, how can you be trusted with residents' money? Uh, well, if, if it was a green-led council, we wouldn't be making uh, some of the poor decisions that have been made previously by the Labour Group. Uh, we'd be working for a, a fairer, a greener town, uh, and we would be prioritising those issues. Uh, I guess residents can trust green councillors based on our, our record of working hard uh, in wards, uh, in, improving them, and that's why we've had more Greens elected. That's why at the last council election, it was only the Green Party that, that made gains, because we're working hard for residents, we're improving the town, and if you can trust us to, to work hard in your ward, you can trust us to run the council. Okay, well, I've got your manifesto here, Rob. It's got 12 points on, and they cover a wide variety of things, but there's not a single indication of any costings for it. Now, are you just in a position where you're making promises about spending residents' money without any idea about how it can be afforded? The Green Party is, is, is realistic. Uh, at the moment in Reading, we have five councillors. Uh, I would love to see uh, the Green Party sweep to power and be running the council after the elections. Uh, but to, to be perfectly honest with you, Phil, uh, I don't think we're going to be in that position. I think the Green Party is, is growing uh, the number of councillors that we've got. I think we stand a realistic chance 
this year of gaining nine councillors in Reading, three in Park, three in Redlands, three in Catesgrove, and becoming the main opposition opposition on Reading Council. Uh, I see us at the moment in Reading as a party that's holding Labour to account and improving their decisions. Uh, I would love to see us running the council at an, uh, after an election in the future. I think for this election, realistically, uh, we, we, we could be the main opposition on the council. Uh, and and the, the manifesto is an indication of our priorities. Uh, but I think if we were to spend uh, hours and hours and hours and days and days and days producing a, a very detailed manifesto, we simply aren't going to be in the position to implement it after the elections uh, because we're not going to have that many that, that many councillors, uh, no matter how optimistic I, I might be. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I, I think that we'll keep working for a green at fairer town. And I think we stand a really good chance of being the main opposition of overtaking the Conservatives at these elections in Reading. Well, you've already touched on this final part, which is council governance. You've touched on the accounts not being filed. You've touched on the uh, before they have been cuts made to the finance team, which you say was uh, affecting the way in which decisions were being made with running both council. I mean, do you still feel that is the same uh, the same problem? And again, you know, would you be pushing to try and get this sorted out once and for all? Yeah, we, we would definitely be, be pushing to sort out the financial mess the council is in. Uh, it, it's not as easy to unpick it afterwards, uh, g given that the council ho hollowed out the financial team and and trying to unpick that and uh, get the accounts signed off is a big job. Uh, but yes, we, we would continue to work hard uh, to put pressure on the council to get this sorted, and so we can move forward with a with a, with a clean set, clean slate, and stop throwing good money after bad. As I mentioned, the council's wasted over a million pounds uh, on accountants to try and sort out this problem. That's money that could have been spent on children's centres. It could have been spent improving our roads. It could have been spent on insulating houses. And, and that money's been wasted, unfortunately. Now, Reading's traditionally been a council with a very strong Labour majority, with the exception of a very small uh, period. Uh, do you feel opposition views have been listened to enough? Do you feel that the, the Labour run council actually wants to constructively engage with opposition parties? Anyone who's ever attended a Reading Council meeting uh, will probably have seen a fair amount of uh, rudeness and abuse dished out from Labour councillors. Uh, I, I don't think Labour listens. I think they have a very arrogant, we know best attitude and they steamroller through the things they want to steamroller through. However, the more Greens we get elected, uh, the more they, they have to listen, the more they see that people are fed up with their, their we know best attitude. And so I, I don't I don't think the council listens at the moment, but I think electing more green councillors is a way to send a very strong message to Labour that they need to start listening to residents. How do you think uh, green councillors can actually be accountable, uh, not just to the rest of the council, but to the wider public? I, th I think that we we can be accountable by by being out there. Uh, we're out knocking on doors all year round talking to residents, uh, listening to residents and working hard with residents to improve the town. Uh, we're out there and we're, we're directly having those conversations. That makes us very, very accountable. And then ultimately at the election, people will vote on 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 what they think, how they think we've done. Uh, we, we've always uh, either held or increased uh, our number of councillors. So I think residents think that, that Greens are going, doing a good job uh, and I hope that we will have a, an increased Green group at the elections this year. And then uh, the final question uh, from me before we have the opportunity to make a direct appeal to voters. It, it's May the 6th, it's Friday, May the 6th, the election is taking place. Reading has given a Green majority. So you are the council leader now. What is your day one priority for the people of Reading? My day one priority for the people of Reading is to look at what can be done uh, to uh, tackle the the crisis where people just can't pay their uh, heating and electricity bills. Uh, so I would be sitting down with the housing team. I'd be sitting down with the sustainability team to see what we can do to get more houses insulated in Reading. It would cut people's energy bills. It would cut our carbon emissions. It would create jobs. It, it's a triple win. Thank you, Rob. Well, um, as I've said, we're now going to give you an opportunity to set out your storm to any Reading voters, people who have not necessarily voted Green before, 
and are thinking about where they want to vote on May the 5th. So what would you actually say directly to the voters, Rob? Thank you, Phil. What, what I'd say is that Labour have been running Reading Council for, for decades. Uh, they're complacent. Uh, they don't listen to residents. Uh, people say that they only see their Labour councillors at election time, if then. In Reading, poverty is going up. Labour isn't getting to grips with tackling climate change and they're failing on bread and butter issues like tackling fly tipping and graffiti. Uh, Greens are working hard all year round. Uh, we're knocking on doors, uh, we're talking to residents, we're picking up issues and we're working with residents to, to improve the local area. Uh, we have achieved much already uh, as, as a small group. We got the council to become a living wage employer. Uh, we got the council to develop a climate change strategy. Uh, and we've been standing up uh, with residents against destructive schemes like Labour's plan to build a road by the Thames. Uh, there's still much to do. Uh, as I've said, we want to see a decent insulation scheme uh, in Reading to cut expensive gas and electricity bills. Uh, we want to see green spaces protected uh, and improved uh, and not built upon. Uh, we want to see more investment in bread and butter issues like tackling fly tipping and graffiti. Uh, I'd, I'd end by saying that for a greener, fairer town, vote Green Party at the elections on Thursday, the 5th of May. Thank you very much for your time, Rob. Obviously, we're interviewing uh, all four of Reading's political leaders in the run-up to the local elections on Thursday, May the 5th. Reading today wants to make sure that you've got access to finding out what the parties stand for. And I hope you find this interview useful as also, as I said at the beginning, uh, on Reading Today's website, there's a profile for every candidate standing in every ward. So again, thank you for your time, Rob, and I, I look forward to seeing how the, the elections go. Thank you, Phil.